What's up, podcast world? This is your host, T. Huff. Welcome to Hollywood Hate Me. And in this episode, I talked to my man, Lloyd Roberson. Lloyd Roberson is an actor, producer. He's my partner in crime. We got a bunch of projects we're working on. And, you know, uh, we sit down and talk about film, debate about stuff and agree on stuff. But, you know, we agree more than debate. I brought him on because one of the things we talk about how we're starting to notice how the studios and the media and the the critics and all these people are calling films indie that are not really indie. I had Lloyd write an article called Indie is not so indie anymore. Then I asked the dude to come back onto the show. I had him in the very first episode of Hollywood Hate Me, where we talked about what Hollywood Hate Me is all about. A little bit about myself and stuff. But um, in that article, we just like I said, we talk about how indie's not so indie anymore. I thought it was a pretty interesting topic since, you know, we talk about it a few times. And I thought that'd be good for you guys to just sit down and listen in on us just shooting the shit, just kind of like we do sometimes. And uh, this is kind of fun, quick episode. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Remember, the show is on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, and SoundCloud. Thank you for all the new listeners and new followers, subscribers. Please keep on following, subscribing, share it with your friends. So they could check it out, your film buddies, whoever, people who just enjoy film in general. And uh, just leave us a review. You could also send uh, questions to uh, HollywoodHateMe at gmail.com. You can just send any questions you have, and then I'll, I'll try to set up a couple of episodes where I'll answer some questions. All right, so let's just get on with the show. Peace. Are you an aspiring filmmaker looking to leave your mark on the big screen? You've come to the right place. Welcome to Hollywood Hate Me with your host, T. Huff. Uh, The reason why I brought you back onto the show, even though I plan on having you come back more, is just a... uh, just just as a way to kind of a little bit of a response to the the article that you wrote called indie is not indie anymore i think that was a great article i think it's it's a topic that uh, we talk about i just wanted the the uh, listeners to you know basically listen in on one of our conversations so i mean if people don't know uh, you are a well-trained actor that is one of your specialties and you're you're also getting into the producing realm of it, but what what, what uh, brought your attention to this subject? Uh, Sans being an actor, I'm a, a human being and a, a creative artist myself, and an avid contributor to the film industry uh, and participating in making of uh, films. So I I do have an invested interest with. Uh, what's happening within the film industry. This article was due to me digging up information about my career and wanting to understand more about the film industry as I progress uh, in my career. So trying to create my life uh, in this career, uh, you know, there's, there's a comparison that normally happens within human beings of the things that are happening around them. And to see myself as a filmmaker, I would have to be an independent filmmaker since I am not part of a studio. And when I see the label indie printed on a four hundred or a, a four million dollar film, a five million dollar film printed on a hundred and fifty million dollar film, I start to question whether or not I can achieve that goal where I'm at now. Where do I start from? If that's the beginning, a five hundred, a five million dollar film is the beginning. Then how do I get from being broke to making a five million dollar film? And then I started to realize, well, the the spirit of independent film is convoluted and lost over the last, you know, fifty years, uh, with studios figuring out that if all I have to do is throw money at the pulse of the people, which would be the original indie film market, and buy out directors, buy out scripts, pay and fund uh, subsidiary companies of my own. Then I have the distribution network to push the films out there. I'm in the plus, and my bottom line is in the plus. And so 
then I started thinking, well, you know, there's this whole sort of DIY, you know, film culture going on. And that kind of still has the heart of independent film. It's it's people who are trying to make their way to be able to shoot a five million dollar film, but just don't have the funds. So where do we start? We do it ourselves. And that's kind of where I that's kind of where I began uh, with the article. And and when and through my research, I found that, I mean, you know, the average indie film average budget for an indie film is a million dollars, give or take. I think a million is conservative. Uh, but when you say a million, okay, that doesn't sound that terrible, but you have to take into account that that's the average. So the top end of that is really high and the bottom end is really low. I mean, those are some high numbers. It's, it's like the, you said a a million is the average. So then for a a budget for a, for a indie film. Okay. So, so when you say indie is not really indie, is this like million dollars or, are this uh, money coming from the it's, studios or it, it's not even it's 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 about. So, I mean, let's look at it. the definition of an independent film uh, is uh, what uh, a production of a film that um, is mostly completed outside of a major film studio system. Right. With with production and distribution of uh, having production and inter- uh, distribution through independent film agencies. OK. So that's what an independent film is. And the word you look at in that is like mostly completed outside of the film industry or or sorry, of the big studios. There is a a film every once in a while, a really good independent film made for under a million that all of a sudden hits the box office and it and it blows up. And all these corporations have to do is copy and paste. Now they have the heartbeat of the, the people this is what the people want. So, okay, let's take this subsidiary. Let's give them funding. And through that funding, we'll distribute them through our network. And that's for the lower budget films. Uh, and lo- by lower budget, I mean the $5 million to 15 to $20 million films is what they consider low budget films. Okay, so is that kind of like the paranormal paranormal uh, activity films? Because remember, uh, well, those, remember that those, first one was super yeah. cheap, and now there's like yeah, I don't even know it's paranormal. Yeah, exactly. par- paranormal probably oh, what twenty now. I just threw yeah. one on last night just to check it out. I, I don't think it was as low budget as the very first one, but they it's keep not. on cranking them out. So is that well, what you're yeah, talking about? Point, yeah, at this point, that's a money maker, and like 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 what happened with with that film. Uh, it, it started off as a, a super low budget film and and then they were able to create the structure and find the platform for it and get the branding on it. And now, you know, you can just keep pushing those bad boys out and they're going to make money. Uh, the, the budget's obviously going to increase because there's more money involved in them, which means more money to be made, you know, through through distribution and 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 other avenues. Uh, merchandise and stuff like that. And so, um, you know, it becomes a simple matter of copy paste when the heart of, you know, the culture or the people that are watching films gets exploited. Um, and that's by somebody coming through with a good indie film and people love it and it, and it takes off. And it's, it's just simple copy paste after that. When, when and how did the lines between indie and the, uh, the, the studio films kind of blur. Uh, yeah, that's been happening for a while. It's been happening for a while. It started like in the fifties, right? When like the, the, like the big five studios couldn't, you know, they were basically about to go out of business. Uh, and they really couldn't figure out, you know, what to do. And they just noticed that like these independent studios and these independent filmmakers were, were, you know, selling out the theaters and, and making a lot of money. So, you know, their big idea was just to, to buy up the young, talented filmmakers that were out there and give them money and have them make their films within the studio. And it worked. And so, OK, then that works. And now all you have to do is use your money and your power to to kind of settle yourself in wherever popularity lies. And, uh, you know, it's been happening for a long time. And, and, and now with the film industry being such a big, big, you know, money making industry corporate, like huge corporations are in it. 
Um, you know, there is a gamble, but not if you not if you play the numbers right. Okay. And so that's why and that's why the line, you know, it's I mean, it's simple mathematics why the lines are blurred. If you know, I mean, I, I look look at me. I, I can sit here and talk about this, but if we're trying to make a film and somebody somebody gets wind of it and they come in and they're like, oh well, we're this you know f- a financier company. Then we find out that that financier company is part of you know some big conglomerate, and then they're also offering distribution. Are we going to say no? No, I'm not going to say no. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to make my film. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So so it sounds like what you, what you're saying is that the studios have been faking these indie films since like the 50s or something like that. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, it it's it's kind of morphed into it's it's definitely evolved. You know, it wasn't it, it used to be way more overt and now it's a little bit covert um with, you know, like I said before with like the subsidiaries having subsidiaries like you just don't know where the money's going, but I can guarantee you, you know, the money's going up. You know, it's not coming down. How does these not so indie films affect the true indie filmmakers like ourselves? Well, I mean, it it, it sets unrealistic expectations. Um, you know, people are losing the game before they even get started. You know, and and then what happens is, um, like I was saying before, they 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 copy paste and and we have this thing of you know, story structures and stories, they all start to look the same and and nothing changes because to a corporation, it's about the bottom line. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, any if any good business has to rely on that bottom line or what are you doing in business? And so how it affects us uh, as as filmmakers, um, I like to call myself a DIY filmmaker right now. I haven't worked my way up to an indie filmmaker yet because, you know, I haven't shot a five million dollar film. Um, <laughs> it affects us because because we, you know, people people feel like they can't do it. Okay. And then they start to feel like the only way that it can be accomplished is if they copy what's already out there. And this is why, you know, this is why we have you know, films that have the same look, the same color concept, the same shots, you know, everything is almost the same. They need, you know, we need to make it look like this so that a distributor can pick it up because if it doesn't look like this, they're not going to pick it up. And for me, that stifles creativity. You know, it, 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 for me, you know, it, uh, a, a, a a filmmaker who is limited by, you know, their resources, you know, that, that creates creativity. You find ways of getting the job done and it creates your own style. You know, you use your ingenuity and you have your own product and not a product that looks exactly like a product that's already out there. And that has been out there for the last 10 years. You know, we, we, we find ourselves trapped in this, this maze of the same thing over and over and over again. And I don't, I don't know if you've noticed it, but I have. It's it's every time I go to a movie or I see a movie, I can tell exactly the way what's going to happen, exactly the way it's going to look within the first five minutes of the film. I know what shots they're going to use, you know, you know how they're going to tell the story. And it's, it's, it's really frustrating to me. Yeah, um, yeah that's because, because of the, the lack. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's because, like you said, Everything is like that's that Hollywood system. That's that corporate system we're talking about. And it is it it is affecting or let's say infecting the the indie world as well. Just like you said, what what you made a great point is because, you know, filmmakers are thinking that yeah, it has to look like Hollywood in order for it to be able to get on the big screen. But that one film, quite sure you heard about it, Tangerine. The one thing that I liked about that film was was how that filmmaker, you know, they used the iPhones and they were like, okay, since we have an iPhone, we have to shoot it like we have an iPhone and just complete and completely embrace what we have and try to come up with creative shots, have everything like, you know, just the camera movement and all that stuff was just done uh, beautifully for that story. And uh, I think that's why that, that film worked out so well is because one, the the actual visuals uh, did not look like a Hollywood film. And then just the use of the cameras and the camera movement, the camera placements wasn't too Hollywood as well. And they shot that for what a hundred thousand dollars, you know? Was it a hundred thousand dollars? Yeah, 
Wow. Yeah. See. Shocking. You just you just never know. But you know it's it's you know you use you, you know but it also what it did was it also created a big boom of like filmmakers think oh well I can shoot on my iPhone just get you know you know Apple was like okay well if you guys want to do this let's uh we'll create expensive lenses for the iPhone and so yeah. now you can just place your iPhone into an actual expensive camera setup with an amazing lens and all you have to do is plug and play you know that that helped the industry that helped us but once again like I said once something goes then there's the carbon copies afterwards Wow, I did not know it was $100,000 for that movie. Yeah. Wow, that did not look like a $100,000 movie. It had the energy, you know, uh, the storyline was different where you where where at least I had no idea what was going on, what was going on as far as I couldn't predict what was going to happen at the end. And uh but $100,000 that could have been made for a lot less. A lot less. This this pretty much leads right into the next question which is you know, is there any other films that that uh, th- that we thought uh, were independent films that w- but it was actually studio films <laughs> like most of them? I mean, let's be honest here, like the major st- studios, you know, there's what like right now there's probably like six major studios. Uh-huh. You know, that's 20th Century Fox, Warner Brothers, Paramount, Columbia, Universal, Disney. Yeah. Uh, and there's some other ones, too. Um, but like they they produce 80 to 85% of the US production box office. That's they bring all that that in, 80 to 85% of the box office. And so most films you probably think are independent somewhere in their pocket, somewhere deep down in the back, one of these companies has their hands within that production and the distribution of it. You know, I was looking at IMDb like they're like most popular independent films of like 2015 and like number one was the revenant <laughs> was their number one popular independent film you know the yeah. revenant caused 135 million dollars to shoot and now it's the number one and, indie film yeah and 20th century fox had everything you know they had their hand all up in it mm-hmm. you know this is why this is why that loose definition of mostly independent from bit larger studios you know is is loose, uh, you know. Yeah. Like Sicario was on there, you know. That was shot for one hundred and thirty million dollars. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. So you know, so why are these black called... mass? So... I, I don't because because the actual production companies they say are independent financiers. You know, we don't know where that money's coming from. Just like you know, okay, there's that movie. Um, so like uh, I researched this this movie called The Witch, right? And yeah. one of the, one of the one of the distributors were A twenty four, which is a subsidiary of Direct TV, and so you know you have you know you have all these you have you have all these different names for things, but the money's still going to the same place. Damn, that's crazy. So what's another film on that list? Oh, there's tons of them. Um, uh, Mission Impossible Five. What on the yeah. indie film list? Yeah. Was some- yeah. 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 Uh, 150 million dollars to shoot. Was there anything on there under 100 million dollars? <laughs> yeah, there was some. I mean, there was, you know, it averaged like I, I, I averaged it out. I uh-huh. went, I only did like the top 20 on that list, right? Okay. And I averaged out the total on the top 20 on that list, and it ended up being the average was 12 to 15 million dollars. Wow. Okay. Like Ex Machina was 15 million dollars, and that was on that list. Yeah, yeah, yes. That and that's one. also on IndieWire too. Okay, yeah, that one. Yes, I thought that was an indie film, but when you yeah. look at it, you know that it was over ten million dollars. Easy. A fifteen million dollar film. Yeah, is an independent film. You know, you see how that can easily discourage somebody from trying to use their own creativity and ingenuity to make a film. Yeah, it makes people it makes people think I have to make that film. I have to make it look like that. And it really stifles creativity within the film industry. Yeah, because it because it because I could see filmmakers thinking that, OK, it at least have to be five million dollars. Right. Yeah. So yeah. then, yeah, they're going to yeah, they're, like, they're, tr- make a film they're trying to five. raise five million dollars for their little indie film. And we're thinking that 
okay, you know, this one costs 15, this one costs 20. So I could should at least be able to get $5 million, Five. but nobody's yeah. really, you know, parting away from their money anymore. Like they used to back in the days, you know, back in yeah. the days, the indie film for like $5 million, $10 million, it was a true indie, indie film because there were people who was, you know, actually given that kind of money willing, away willing um, to gamble yeah yeah willing to gamble but now i mean i'm assuming with all the uh the superhero films they're expecting a hundred million dollar return that people aren't really investing in the small little films if you don't have somebody in your film and oh so, yeah no, so, that's not happening yeah so i can see it discouraging a filmmaker like myself if i'm trying to raise five million dollars yeah but here's the thing also is that there are people a lot of these films that are being made for this amount of money their financiers are also you know their backers are coming from these big giant studios who have a surplus surplus of money to push out there because they're going to get that bottom line up once they push it through distribution and their distribution network so when we look at these numbers it's like oh I can shoot a 5 million dollar film but you're shooting a 5 million dollar film to make it look like that when you can shoot that same film for a lot less and have it look like something that's yours. And it's also, you know, it's also ruining the audience, too, because the audience comes to, well, that's what I like. You know, it's like a song. You know, you ever hear a song that you really hate, but you hear it over and over and over again and you really love it. And yeah, all like, the time, all the time. That's that that's the song that you like and and you start to all of a sudden like that genre of music and that's the genre of music you listen to when you're riding in your car well you know it's like that with the film industry when i see films like that and then i see something new i can't fathom okay it didn't look like that so this must be not very good so i'm i'm gonna not watch this but in reality that that thing that completely looks different than what the main market stream is for films is somebody deciding to push the the envelope somewhere else? What can we do to combat this crazy fake indie industry? I mean, nothing. <laughs> make <laughs> films, you know. Uh -huh. Just make film, make films, make films, make films. Because here's the thing: is why I say that is because honestly, <laughs> like we can sit here and talk about that, but you talk talk like. You know, we're holier than thou. But uh -huh. as soon as somebody comes and gives you a shit ton of money to make a film, you're going to want to do it. And not everybody's going to want to do that. And everybody has their integrity. And mm -hmm. I, I agree with that. But, you know, there's nothing you there are enough people out there that will take it. And so now that we have all these other avenues of distribution, I mean, you know, it's like it's like the the, the same, you know, the coin's going to flip. And it'll land on the other side, but it's still the same coin. You know, eventually these the, the Internet distribution and the multimedia distribution that's out there and new and 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 great for a bunch of independent filmmakers now will eventually become big conglomerates. And, you know, it all eventually will all become part of the big system. But for right now, you know, just make your films, make films. You know, you don't. Don't be discouraged by people making, you know, five million, six million, seven million dollar films if you're not there yet. You know, it, there's nothing wrong with making a film for thirty million dollars, thirty thousand dollars if you can make it with integrity and you can use your ingenuity and make it look good and make it look like it's yours. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, finding money, crowdfunding is a huge thing. Um, learning how to crowdfund. There are people out there that are willing to crowdfund films because they're tired of looking at the same old films over and over and over again. And, you know, using using the multimedia distribution networks and, and searching those out. Uh, what is it? Like, somewhere at Sundance, like, I think it was last year, a bunch of films, like, there was like, I don't know, it was like almost half the films got picked up because of, because of uh, the multimedia distribution. Um, and the internet or the internet distribution, sorry. And so that's that's a crazy number, you know. That it, you're not gonna make as much money back off of that. And so you know, it is a it is a gamble. But if you're not there yet, you're not there yet to make a ten, fifteen million dollar film. So don't be discouraged. Just make films. Make a film for like a thousand bucks. Hopefully, you make back five. Now you got five thousand to make another film and then another film. And you just got to work your way up. It, you know, it's just it's really a, a, a real daunting task when you want to jump into this industry and you look up and you have to have 15 million dollars to make a film. 
Okay. So that's so. a lot of money. People don't people don't <laughs> see that in their lifetime. You know, like yeah. I just it just it's so weird to you know hear people just kind of throw numbers out like that that it that that it just doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's a five million dollar film. People don't see five million dollars in their life. They work their asses off and never see it. So like that's a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. Even I, um, I had a friend of mine, a producer friend of mine talking about he was trying to raise something like $250,000 for an indie film. And I was thinking, man, that's a lot of money. Like, gr- good luck, lot. good luck. But that's a lot of money. And, you know, and, he, and, and as far as I know, he's still trying to raise the money for it. You know, if you listen, man, I hope you can, you could do it. I'm rooting for you. But that's a lot of money. It's and a so, whole lot of money. Yeah. And so my last question, man, uh, you know, I got to let you go. So my last question is, is there... A indie film, like you know, what is your like fa- all time favorite indie film? My all time favorite, yeah. Uh, indie film, oh man. Um, I'm gonna say, uh, Garbage Pell Kids. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that movie? <laughs> Gar- wasn't that was that an indie film? I thought that was a studio I- film. Oh, baby, I have no clue. I just remember how shitty it was. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not, say- no, I'm not <laughs> saying that. <laughs> no, I'm not saying that just because it looked shitty it was an indie film. I actually don't know if it was an independent film. I just remember it as a kid okay. being like, well, <laughs> what are they doing? they're doing something with this. <laughs> so is that your answer or was you just joking? <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Uh, that's my wait. Let me see. Who? What did, did they? No, that that couldn't have been a studio film. Could it have been a studio film? Was studios making that shitty of films back then? Man, yeah, I, that was a, that was. They made I, that for a million dollars. I think that. Oh, that could have been indie. Back then, yeah, million I dollars, think that right? was indie. Yeah, yeah, I think that was indie. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It was just distributed. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. They uh, the production companies were super indie. Or right, well, Tops Chewing Gum was part of one of them, which I mean, yeah, I they, love my chewing gum. They could have got the money from Tops, you know. So, so I'm going with Garbage Pail Kids, the movie. Hey, go ahead. That's all you, man. That's all you. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. That movie was so good. That movie was so bad. <laughs> it was. It was so bad. It was good. Yeah. Would you uh, Would you count Pulp Fiction as an indie? No. Yeah. I mean, he was young then. Yeah, he was young then, but I wouldn't count that one as an indie. That's when yeah. he started to go for you know into the studio system even more. Yeah. Yeah. Reservoir. So I'm going garbage. Folk Reservoir kids. Dogs. I would say that's indie. Yeah, I would say Reservoir. I would say Reservoir. Yeah. Yeah, you're right because that was that was right around when he started to uh, he got really popular and his. That, I mean, but. Once again, inspiration. Well, man, okay, that's about it. Thanks for your time. Always, man. I'm always there for you. Have a good one. Because I love you. (laughs) Peace. All right, man. Peace. Thanks for listening to Hollywood Hate Me with T. Huff. We here at Hollywood Hate Me love your support and can't wait to give you some movie-making insights in the next episode. 